Uh, hi there, this video tutorial will go over the process of creating these steel beams, uh, sort of steel truss type effect. Um, it's introductory 3D game asset tutorial, so we're looking at the pipeline. So it's about the production pipeline of creating an asset. So we're modeling the low poly version, um, low poly in game version in Maya. And then we're creating a very simple high poly version. So we're essentially just subdividing, beveling the edges so that it can smooth nicely. And the reason we're doing that is we're exporting out the low poly and the high poly into separate objects, which you can, we can bring into a baking program X normal. We're then baking the high poly detail onto the low poly just in order to create an ambient occlusion map. Um, we're not actually doing that to create a normal map which is also a standard workflow. From there, what we do is create a normal map from scratch in Quixel using Endu. And all we're doing is turning a photo from this texture, uh, the, the color texture here that is used for the, the metal texture, the, the, the metal color. We're using that to create bump map, bump map information uh, using Endu's photo conversion process. And we're manually drawing in these sort of rivet type effects using a normal map, uh, just using Endu's Sculpt Layer toolset. So it's all a very quick workflow, but it's important steps in um, understanding the entire production pipeline. Okay, I'm going to start by making a cube. And we'll just scale. Actually, what I'll do is turn on my snap to grid and snap the bottom ones to the um, center line and the top ones to the one unit up. And I'll snap these sides like so. And I might just scale this in. So this will be the start section of the cross beam. center of the cross beam. I'll use my multi-cut. Now it's set to 10%. If I were to uh, hold down control, it gives me a preview of the insert loop. If I hold down shift as well as control, that snaps the unit, uh, snaps the loop by the units that I've got set. What I want to do is set it evenly to each side, but because I choose the first one, which is 10%, this next setting will snap 10% from here to here, rather than going from here to here. It's only doing this bit. So a simple trick is to snap, uh, hold down shift and snap this to the center. So now that I've got it to the center, this first one will go from here to here. The second one will go from here to here. So it's always going to be uh, exact like so. And now double clicking that will select the whole edge loop and then hitting control and delete will delete that edge loop. And that's just basically going into your edit mesh, delete edge vertex, which is important to do. It doesn't leave behind any vertices. And if I just quickly undo that, if I hit the, the delete key instead of control delete, uh, we can see it leaves behind these random verts, which we don't want. So just make sure you select your edge loop and you hold down control and delete anytime you want to get rid of edges. Uh, now I'm just going to select these faces and extrude those out. So once I've hit extrude without touching anything, I'm just turning on the scale tool and scaling those out a little. I'm just kind of eyeballing it on um, the size. I think that's about what I want. So it's a pretty hefty kind of uh, steel beam that we're making. So as a starting point, uh, that's basically all I'm doing really. Um, I'm just going to turn on the screen-based ambient occlusion. Just gives it a little shading, makes it easier to see the size. Okay, so uh, I've got my pivot up here. I'll turn off the snap to grid. I'll just snap that pivot um, to the center. So that's just going into modify uh, center pivot. Uh, I'm in the habit of holding down space to get to my menus quickly. 
Um, what I'll do now is just duplicate, so Control D to make a new version of this. Uh, but instead of dragging it up, I think I'll just drag it over here. And what I want to do is create an angle. So um, if I hold down J and rotate, that snaps my rotation. And I only want a light angle, uh, so 15 degrees. Um, what I'll do here actually is if I hold down D, that lets me move my pivot. And if I hold down V, that turns on my snap to vert. So I'm holding down D and V, moving my cursor over a vertice here, and then holding down the middle mouse. So it's holding down D, V, move your cursor where you want it, and move the middle mouse. So it's a quick way of snapping, of snapping your pivot point. And the reason I did that is now I hit Control D to duplicate, and I can just hold down V and snap objects together. I did that because I want to check the length of the object. Um, and what I want is one that's completely flat like this. I'm going to make another one here that will be a corner section. So it will go from flat to connecting to this angle. So I'm just uh, holding down D and V, snapping my pivot over here, holding down V and snapping this down here, just to position how I want it. Um, so yeah, that's the kind of effect I'm after. Just a slight bend and then we'll go vertical at the end. So the way I'm going to do this is actually by extrusion. There's various approaches I could take. So um, what I'll do actually is go into my uh, multi-tool, multi-pass. I hold down uh, with these faces selected, hold down shift, and this basically lets me select different modes. I could select a vert or a face or an edge. And what I want is all of these faces selected plus this edge, and I'm going to use the wedge tool. So under edit mesh, faces, wedge. Oh, something happens there. I'll just control Z, I have this guy selected. And just G to repeat that wedge. Um, G to repeat the last tool used. Okay, now I don't want quite that depth. Let's try just typing in 15. That's good because I've rotated this 15 degrees. That should match. I don't want four divisions. I'll just make that one division. Actually, um, I might just rotate this a bit more. I'm just holding down J. Snapping once more, so 30 degrees I think looks better. Um, I'll just undo that entirely. Rotate this. So 30 degrees. Multi. Uh, make sure I haven't got that selected. Wedge. 30 degrees. And just the one division. Snap the pivot up here and hold down V and snap my beam there. And we can see that that connects perfectly because this is rotated exactly 30 degrees. And I use the wedge tool to wedge that exactly 30 degrees. So a nice easy way to connect those. Um, yep, happy with that. What I'll do now is grab this section and duplicate and snap it down here. Just hit F to focus, that's how I'm quickly zooming in there. And E to get my rotate tool, hold down J and, whoops, hold down J to snap my rotation. So it's 90 degrees, it's vertical. And we'll connect these in uh, multi tool multi-selection mode. 
wedge and it's going to be 90 minus 30 because we're already rotated 30 degrees so subtract that 30 and that gives me the exact amount to go vertical um, kind of looks cool actually with those four divisions but um, I do like the one division just to get a nice solid kind of look Um, I think the soft curving nature, it looks good, um, it certainly works, um, but it's just a little bit sort of too organic for what, what I'm trying to do here. Um, I'm happy with, with a single division, whatever um, works for you. Okay, so that's essentially um, the whole beam done. So that's a nice cross section. Um, I could have easily changed the length of that if I wanted to, um, but I'm happy with that. Uh, if I wanted to, to do that, um, we can scale along that length. Now the way that's working is in my tool settings, it's set to object mode. So if it's set to world mode, it scales like this. We open up our tool settings and set that to object and it goes along its axis and because it's rotated at 30 degrees our orientation for the scale is also rotated at 30 degrees but just be aware um, as it's scaling the whole lot is scaling uh, which means the end is losing its size so really a, a better way to do it is work out the distance you want before you model uh, that section. Um, but it wouldn't be too hard to adjust that if I wanted to. I could um, manually do that in the front view. Um, but anyway, uh, I'm not doing that. I'm happy with what I've got. And what I'll do, I just want to keep that separate so I've got the original there. But for these guys, so these are three separate meshes. Um, I just want to isolate this. So this button isolates whatever you have selected. And we've got these faces on the inside that aren't being seen. So I'm just going to select those and just hit the delete key to get rid of them. And same here. And turn off my isolate uh, and I'll check this one. Uh, isolate. Okay, and this one, isolate that, and just get rid of those. Any faces that won't be seen, and certainly any faces that will be on the inside of a mesh, uh, need to be deleted. They, they really shouldn't be there. Um, so these faces are important because they're going to connect to these, and you don't want faces inside there uh, causing problems. These ones we could get away with leaving uh, because I'm not connecting anything else to it, but this section will be on the ground. Uh, so it won't be seen, so it's, there's no point having faces there. So I'll just delete those. I'm just going to grab the three of them in object mode. Back to my modeling toolkits and click on combine. So these are the one mesh. And I just need to merge the vertices. What I'll do is just grab the whole lot, go into merge, and just pay attention. I've got um, how many verts are shown. So there's 120 vertices shown. I like to always zoom in on two sections that are the closest. And the way this works is you um, select a threshold that is large enough to select the verts that are on top of each other, but not large enough to collapse. So to illustrate, uh, we have these verts that are not joined. So if I drag select that, you'll see it's showing me two verts at the moment. Um, so I drag select the whole lot. Shows me 120 verts. If I were to have this up too high uh, and apply,
Oh, that's just not working. Uh, let's see. Okay, that's worked. Um, so that's gone down to 180 verts. 108, oh, sorry, 88 verts. Um, if I have that up too high, Not sure why that's not working. That should actually be collapsing. There we go. Um, so you have it too high and they all collapse. If you have it too low, um, they may not actually merge. So generally you start just with resetting the settings, but you need to find the right balance on that threshold. Uh, so it's just a matter of checking how many verts you currently have selected and observing in your viewpoint viewport um, two verts close together that should stay separate and if you see them combine then you've got your threshold too high but if you see nothing change and that ver vertex count doesn't change then you've got your threshold too low yeah. so just move that slider until it works okay so we've merged these verts so you can see there uh, these are joined and so that is one single piece. And what I'm going to do is hold down D and V, snap my vert over here, control D to duplicate. And in the X, scale X, I'm putting in negative one. So that's scaling. If you scale into negative space, it mirrors, which is why we want a negative value. And I'm selecting the two and combining. And I'll just merge those verts. So I've got 32 selected. And uh, merge. Uh, 16 selected. So it's exactly half. Okay, still a problem. Yeah, we can see they're, they're not connected. There's something strange going on. Right. Um, I forgot to delete those faces on the inside. I might just actually come in here and do it this way. Rookie mistake. Not a big deal. Just come through and delete those faces that I know shouldn't be there. Um, I'll just control Z, accidentally deleted that one. So, important not to have faces on the inside. All right, so now if I double click that edge, it loops around. If it doesn't loop around, there's some sort of problem causing it. So I control delete to get rid of that. And that is basically the finished um, low poly model. And so what I'll do now is just a quick unwrap on that model. All right, so before I unwrap, I just want to run a mesh cleanup. Mesh cleanup and make sure that's set to select select matching polygons and I'm looking for n-gons so faces with more than four sides any laminar faces or non-manifold geometry and if there's any problems that'll show me which faces are having issues so I can see there's no issues there just map this based on camera that's a good starting point that gives me the model with no seams I'll just select the UVs and move this out of my zero one space and the workflow here is to simply go through the whole model and cut edges where we need them. If I go into display polygons, texture border edges, and then the edge width, again in display polygons, this gives me a visual of where the UV cuts are. So that's really quite useful. You can see at the base of the beams, I've got those cuts. 
And all I'm going through now is cutting this up. Uh, I'm double clicking these edge loops on the outside and clicking cut UVs. And then once I've, I've used that tool once, anytime I select an edge, I just hit G to repeat last tool and that cuts the UVs again. So I'm just going through the whole model and selecting, selecting all the obvious sections where there should be cuts and hitting G to repeat that cut UV tool. If I think it's good, I'll go back into my UV editor and select UV mode, drag select all of the UVs and then open up the UV, unfold UV option. Make sure unfold 3D is selected and also set your map size to 2048 and click unfold. And that does a, a reasonable job. If I just, just turn on my checkers, I can take a look in the viewport and see how it's gone. I'll just scale those up quite large so it's much easier to see how my UV stretching is looking. I can see that checker texture much easier with the scale um, being a higher level. So it's not bad, there's a couple of problems, most notably this one on the left here. So I'll just select the UVs of it and then hold down control, right click and go to shell and that just quickly selects just that shell. And what I can see is that's tried to unfold the entire bottom section in one hit. It's because these edges here, I'll just cut those now, uh, they weren't selected when I double clicked that edge loop, it didn't go all the way around. So you just want to make sure when you're cutting edges you are selecting what you think you've got. But it's really not a problem to fix. I've just drag selected that vertice here, I'm double checking, looking in my head up display, double checking I've only got one vertice there and I haven't got doubles. So I'm selecting the whole lot and running the unfold tool again. And you can see this time it's worked uh, much better. Of course the packing is terrible, it packs in the UV. It doesn't pack well at all, but that's fine. We just manually pack that. And um, this is looking pretty good for the initial unfold. So now I'll scale these down and I need to um, pack everything, all these shells into that zero one space tightly. And looking at this long stretch, um, I think it really needs some to be chopped up. It won't fit into the zero one space at the same resolution. We need all of our shells to be the same resolution as, as each other. So I've got this selected. I can see it's this large underside section. I'll just go through and cut these pieces. So that cut is looping all the way around the model. And if we unfold again, you can see that whole lot fits in there at a much nicer scale. When we run the unfold over the whole model, it's scaling everything with pack selected. It's scaling everything to the same resolution. And what I've done here is scale up the model just slightly because I know that I should be able to pack each one of these shells individually. Using the move UV shell tool in the upper left there, I can, with one click, click and drag on a shell and it will let me select and move the entire shell. So it's a really useful tool for packing UVs. And I'm just going to eyeball this to rotate it, to try to get it fairly aligned. Um, you don't need to be pixel perfect with your alignments. It is very nice if they align. Um, I think we're all a little bit OCD trying to keep everything in alignment. It's not a big deal. However, um, as long as they do line up. So I'm just trying to keep my shells together. So the shells that are similar should be to near each other as much as possible. Um, you, you generally, best rule of practice, best practice for when you're unpacking is just keep all your shells um, in sort of a logical arrangement. as much as you can. I'll just speed up this section a little bit. Um, I'm simply going through and placing all of my shells aligned with each other as best as possible. It's important to be neat. It's also important to leave a little bit, bit of padding 
between these shells. So the shells are sort of spaced with, with little gaps between them. Um, you're trying to find the balance between getting everything in your zero one space quite tightly so that you don't have any wasted space. A fair bit of empty space there. So what I've done is scale the whole lot up and I'm going to repack everything. Um, especially with a fairly simple asset like this, packing your UVs is really quick. Uh, it only takes you know a couple of minutes and it's absolutely worth going through and doing again if it means getting a better pack. Finally, I decided what if I just move or reduce the spacing between these. So I'll just pack them a little bit tighter and make sure there's less wasted space in there. I'll finish the unwrap. Polygons, UV snapshot. And just browse, navigate to where you want to save the file. So in my project folder in the images, I'll save it in here and call this um, something like steel truss UVs or snapshot or something. Uh, 2048 texture, which is the, the resolution I'm working with and click OK. Just deleting my history and renaming the uh, object. And this is my finished low poly model. So we'll just export this selection as an OBJ. Uh, obviously export into the project folder that I'm working in. I might actually just make a new folder called export. And um, we'll call this steel truss LP for low poly. It's important to name use a naming convention where you can easily identify in the name what the file is. So that's my low poly model.